can I hold up this month's books? No. No. No, I, I can't. I cannot. I cannot. Ugh. Oh, wait. I thought that Holy shit. Honestly, I'm quite surprised I didn't just break the table because I kind of just dropped them. Whew, that was a lot. Uh, hello. And today is going to be my wrap up for the month of October. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Jessica. Hello, welcome. I always try to read 31 spooky books in October. Do I ever make it to 31 spooky books in October? No. Is it a great time getting there? Absolutely. Let's discuss how many books I did actually read this October. In the month of October, I read a ridiculous 21 books for a total of 6,488 pages. Is this my highest book count month? Yes. Is it my highest page count month? Also yes. It's a lot of times in October I'll read a bunch of books but it'll be like short books. No, your girl read a shit ton of full-length novels. We also DNF'd some things. We also unhauled some things. We're gonna talk about some things. First thing I need to do is get a couple of these books off the top because those are hauled books for uh, the TBR takedown. We're not talking about those right now so those can just slide on over there for later. Uh, hello, it's still a giant stack of books. So for my wrap ups, I typically start at the lowest rated book and work my way up to the highest rated book. This month was a little different because I was reading so much. I did do a mid month wrap up where I talk about 15, the first 15 books that I read this month. And I also did an arc wrap up this month. So all of the arcs that I read are in a video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, as I said in my mid-month wrap-up, beautifully bookish Bethany style. If you're familiar with Bethany's wrap-up videos, uh, pretty much what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start at the lowest rated, work my way up, but if it's a book I've talked about in one of those other two videos, I will direct you to that video down below or in the cards. Also, I will probably link everything. It's Goodreads review link down below, as I always do. So there are multiple ways for you to get to the information that you would like to have. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our DNFs and our unhauls. I am DNFing This Silver Witch by Paula Braxton and I'm unhauling The Return of the Witch by Paula Braxton. I listened to a little bit of this for about an hour on audio on my drive home from Michigan and I am just not vibing with her writing style. It's not even really the story or anything to do with that. I don't like the writing style. I am just not here for this. So I decided that since I'm going to DNF this based off of the writing style, I probably should just go ahead and DNF this as well. Technically unhaul this as well. Um, I know I typically always give books a chance, but if the writing style is not working for me, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to try another book by the same author, uh, especially when I know that all of her books are fairly similar. So Bye bye The other book that I'm DNFing is The Last of August by Brittany Cavallaro. We're going to talk about the first book in the series a little bit later. Um, I did read the first book in the series this month, but I'm not going to continue on with it. So I'm going to DNF this guy and we'll talk later about why I'm not continuing on with the series. Okay. Wouldn't you know it, the lowest rated book this month was a book we haven't talked about yet. So let's just kick off with that. The lowest rated book this month is The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. Yikes. I gave this a 1.75 out of 5 stars. Not is it only the lowest rated book this month. I think it's the lowest rated book this year. It was a mess y'all. So this book was really short and I read there's someone inside your house. There's someone in your house. There's someone inside your house. I think that's the name. Either way. I read the book last year. I really enjoyed it. I watched the movie this month on Netflix. Really enjoyed it. I'm um, actually like the killer reveal better in the movie than in the book but that's a whole other tea for a whole other day. But I was like, absolutely, I must now read The Woods Are Always Watching because I I liked the first book and so I need to read the second book. I haven't read any Stephanie Perkins. I haven't read her romance books. So I was like, absolutely. Uh, 
as I started reading it, my lovely friends reached out to me and were like, hey, when you're done reading that, let's talk about it because it's kind of a shit show. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. So uh, <laughs> it's about 200 pages. The first 100 pages is just absolute prissy girl complaining. I guess I should tell you what this book's about. So the book is about two best friends who are getting ready to go away to college. Well, one's going away to college and one's staying in their small town forever. And they decided that they wanted to go on a like hiking camping trip for three days, though neither of them had any hiking and camping experience. And to like solidify their friendship, girls, just get a hotel room, okay? Just get a hotel room and hang out for three days and watch stupid TV shows, all right? Okay, so the first 100 pages is these girls, like, getting their stuff together, going on this trip. Their parents make them, like, prove that they can, like, start a fire and put up a tent and yada, yada, yada. One of the girls with her brothers is a hiker, and he and his girlfriend both hike, and they borrowed their stuff so they could go hiking, and they're, like, hiking this trail in the mountains, and they've never really been there, and why? Okay. And so the first 100 pages is like they have kind of a shit first day and they kind of are snippety and snappity at each other. Neither one of them want to be there, but neither one of them want to concede that they don't want to be there. They don't want to let the other person win. So they have to continue fighting with each other for 100 pages. And the second 100 pages is just absolute outright bullshit bananas. I don't even know what the fuck was happening. Okay. So like horror movies and horror books, they've got some things like they've definitely got their things and that's fine. But this book took some fucking turns that I just don't understand. Okay. Are we going to get into spoilers for this? Okay, so vaguely, I'll tell you vaguely and then we'll talk spoilers because I have to talk spoilers about this. Why? Okay, so vaguely, one of the girls gets very injured and is immovable. So the other girl tries to go back to their car to get help. They're separated. Shit starts happening. Dun dun dun. Okay, so I'm going to put a spoiler alert card here and uh, if you can come back when this is gone. Okay, so basically they're fighting over which trail they want to take and they are like following this bottle cap trail where like people put bottle caps into the trees and they start to realize they they can't find the bottle caps they're looking for and then one of the girls is like oh it's over here by this tree they must have fallen off yeah because they're nailed on a tree they must have fallen off and she walks over and falls into this pit of despair her leg snaps like to the point that her ankle and her foot are disconnected from like, her leg like it's just it's just hanging there and they're talking about like the blood coming out of it and how much she's bleeding and like the bone sticking out it's not supposed to stick out she's awake mind you like she didn't pass out from like exhaustion blood loss uh shock she's cool she's chilling her friends up here on top of the hill they can't get to each other and uh atop of the hole they can't get to each other and she's like i'll just wrap it up with my sweatshirt i don't even remember what she wrapped it up with but whatever she wraps it her foot back to her leg with some shit from inside of her bag cool cool okay so like they separate then like the creepy soccer guys come in one on each girl the girl in the hole gets into a fight with this dude and he blows off her fucking hand like the whole hand like she puts up her hands defensively and her whole hand <laughs> gone. So now not only is her entire foot disconnected from her leg and bleeding, but she also no longer has a hand. And yet somehow this bitch is still alive, coherent, not bleeding to death. And that motherfucker gets out of the hole and starts walking around the fucking woods trying to get out. How? How, motherfuckers? How? How? You tell me how. Because I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm just a broke ass white bitch from Ohio. There is no fucking way that I believe this. Like there is no way that this is, it, it's not happening. I'm sorry, it's not. Okay, not only that, on top of that, on top of everything else, on top of everything else, like that whole thing, there's other stuff that happens, but like, so, 
the two kidnapper guys bring these girls back together, okay? There's two kidnapper guys, they work together, they've killed a lot of people in the past. For some reason, people just randomly go missing in these set of woods all the time, and no one cares, and they let their two kids go walking in the woods when they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. But okay, anyway, the girls are like tied up to trees. The guys are basically going to rape them and then kill them. Uh, the one guy likes them alive and the other one likes them after they're no longer alive. All right. Um, how come this bitch, this bitch that's not hurt bitch, this bitch suddenly gets the power to read into their fucking minds? Like, somehow we're in her head and she can see their past. And not only where the fuck does that come from, but also they're trying to get me and you, the reader, trying to get us to feel sorry for these guys who are raping and murdering people. Like they're giving us their backstory, giving us their like, their life story of how like they had these rough childhoods and they just grew up so terribly. And, oh my God. And like, but are you trying to victim blame and also trying to like make me feel bad for the bad guy by giving this bitch superpowers? And why are you gonna give her superpowers that lets her read the minds of people who are trying to hurt her when you could have gave her superpowers to get them out of the situation in the first place? And, and on top of all that, on top of all that, motherfuckers, motherfuckers, a bear. They've been talking about bears this whole time. Like, there's bears in these woods, there's bears in these woods, there's bears in these woods. Ain't seen no hide nor sign of a bear the whole fucking time. Right before the creepy guys can do the creepy things the creepy guys are gonna do, a bear fucking comes in and attacks them. A bear comes in and attacks them because naturally these girls get up they untie themselves they get up they're like just casually walking away from the bear who's mauling this guy to death which fair um that's like the best part of the whole book so the one girl's like using the one bad guy's gun as a crutch because she doesn't have a fucking foot anymore or a hand mind you and she's using the gun as a crutch to help her get out of this fucking mountain and candy mountain charlie candy mountain and they like they get to their vehicles they see this other vehicle parked there and rather than like just getting in their car and driving the fuck away because the one who's injured is the one who's driving because the other girl's having an asthma attack the one with no hand at no foot she's the motherfucker driving because the other girl's having an asthma attack and she can't drive they take they don't know that these guys are dead they i mean sure they're being attacked by a bear but the other bitch has no hand and no foot and she's walking out of the woods just peach keen so clearly we have no sense of what's actually happening here so this bitch instead of just getting in the car and driving away she takes the time to slash the tires of this other vehicle that's in the parking lot because it might be their car. Bitch, you are bleeding to death. Your friend is gonna die from an asthma attack. They're getting eaten by a bear in the woods. There's more things that are important right now than this. I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings. <sighs> That's how it ends, by the way. They just like drive off into the future. Yeah, so 1.75 stars for uh, The Woods Are Always Watching. It was great. Clearly. Highly do not recommend. Uh, let's see, what's our next <laughs> rated book? Next is The Orphan Witch by Paige Crutcher. I gave that a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I talked about that in my ARC wrap up, so if you want to know more about that, it's linked down below. But essentially it's about an orphan who's a witch who has, like, her whole life, if she stares someone in the eyes for longer than, like, five seconds, they lose their shit and, like, try to kill themselves or other people or chop all their hair off or just bad things happen. Essentially, this orphan finds some friends and some other witches and some weird shit happens. And I didn't like it. Also, a 2.25 this month was Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena. I own that one. I could hold that one up for you. Where's it at? All the way on the bottom. Let's find it. It's this one. This is my book of the month pick. So this book follows a family setting. I think it's Easter or Thanksgiving. Is it Easter dinner? Easter dinner. Okay, so this family's having Easter dinner. It's a husband and wife, their three adult children, their adult children's partners, and their long time nanny slash housekeeper. So they are having this dinner. Shit happens. 
Um, the kids all go home the next day. The parents have been brutally murdered. And the whole book is us figuring out who killed the family. Okay. <laughs> I hated every single motherfucker in this book. Like, I don't even care that the parents were murdered because if they were my parents, I probably would have murdered them too. Yeah, they were horrible people, like absolute horrible people, and they deserve to die, and they should have died about 20 years earlier before they were able to procreate, because their children are a hot fucking mess too, um, which would need to have been like 40 years earlier. That's outside of the point. Anyway, moving forward. Um, <laughs> I hate their kids. Their kids are horrible people. Absolute shit shows. And honestly, I didn't care which one killed the parents, because I was like, or if it wasn't them, either way. Um, didn't care who killed the parents, didn't care if it was one of the kids, didn't care if the kids decided to kill each other, I had no thoughts or feelings. But also, it was just so dry, so boring, and I knew who the killer was very early on because it's it's obvious by the way it's not obvious, if you know what I mean. They definitely spend time going, th walking through all of these characters of who could have done it, how, and why, and there's one character that they blatantly leave out the entire time, so you know. Clearly it was then. Uh, there's just a bunch of shit going on in here and I just didn't care for it, so not for me. Moving on. Next is Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This book is exactly what you think it is. It's about Abraham Lincoln in history if he were a vampire hunter. I talk about this in my mid-month wrap-up, so I will link it in the description box down below. It was just okay. Another book that I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up that I gave a 2.75 out of 5 stars was The Project by Courtney Summers. I had such high hopes for this and it just did not make it there, my friends. Um, this book is about a girl whose sister was kind of taken into this cult and it's about her trying to figure out how to get her sister out of the cult without being sucked into the cult herself. Very unbelievable plot lines here, but uh, yeah, if you want to know full thoughts mid-month wrap-up. It's got your back. Next are two three stars that I also talked about in my mid-month wrap-up and they are uh, books five and six in the Sarah Normal series, Moment of Truth, Giving Up the Ghost. These are just a mid-grade spooky series about a girl named Sarah who can see and talk to ghosts. Liking them less as they go on. Uh, these are the last two that I own physical copies of. Probably will not pick up anymore until my TBR has significantly dwindled. Here's one we talked about earlier, A Study in Charlotte. This is a 3.25 out of 5 stars. Again, talked about this in my mid-month wrap-up, but basically this is a book about um, the children, the great, 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 great children. Are they the children of Holmes and Sherlock? I don't even know. They're family members of Holmes and Sherlock, and essentially they meet at a boarding school people think they should be friends because reasons and things happen and I just didn't I didn't click with this book with the vibe with the it just it didn't work for me so not continuing on with this series which is why I unhauled the other book next at 3.5 stars we have The Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook this was in my arc wrap up for the month but this book follows a few different timelines and multiple different characters. It follows a mother and her three daughters in about 22 years prior, where we get the point of view of the mother and the oldest daughter. We also get the viewpoint of the middle daughter 22 years in the future, and there's also a male point of view that's kind of a mystery until you read a little further in. And essentially, they are on this island where um what people consider like changelings kind of take over people's children and if you realize that your family member has been taken over by a changeling then you're supposed to take them to the woods and kill them because if not like everybody in your family will die and the viewpoint of the future is the middle daughter whose mother and two sisters both disappeared on the island when she was there when they were children and she gets a call from the police department that's like, hey, we found your sister who's been missing all these years. And she goes to pick up her sister from the hospital and her sister is the same age as she was when she disappeared. For some reason, no one but her seems to figure that out. Anyway, enjoyed it, recommend it, but check out the ARC review video. Which, volume eight, which is technically part three, A Crisis on Both Worlds, volume two. 
but it's Witch Volume 8. These things are named weird. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Not my favorite of the series, but definitely still enjoying it. Still planning to continue on with this series. Um, I it, Very nostalgic, and I love it. The series basically follows five teens. They might be preteens, they might be in middle school. I'm not 100% sure on the technicalities of that aspect, but uh, there are five young girls who are given these custodial powers over uh, these magic powers that help them protect a barrier between their world and magical worlds. That if the magical worlds were to seep into their world, they would kind of destroy everybody. And so they're kind of like the peacekeepers of the galaxy, if you will. Also a four star, also a book we talked about in the mid-month wrap up, the Hocus Pocus sequel. Um, not the first book because I read that last year, but the sequel part I read this year. Um, sometimes it's just called Now. Um, it is exactly that, a rehash of Hocus Pocus. And if you want to know my full thoughts, mid-month wrap up. Uh, next is two books technically. Um, Spirit Hunters and the Spirit Hunter sequel, Island of Ghosts. I gave the first book 4.25 and the second book a 4 out of 5. Um, I really liked these. I talked about them both in my mid-month wrap-up. Um, they are mid-grade, spooky, a lot of ghost tropes. Really enjoyed them. Another book we talked about in the mid-month wrap-up, A Wicked Magic by Sasha Lawrence. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It follows three girls, two of whom are naive witches, which basically means that they find a magic book that gives them power. Naive witches are a little chaotic, my friends. Um, as I always tell you, um, set in the atmospheric wilds of California's northern coast, Sasha Lauren's eerie debut novel is about the complications of friendship, taking back power, and embracing the darkness that lurks within us all. I really love this book. I highly recommend it if you like YA and magic. Also a 4.25 out of 5 stars and talked about in the mid-month wrap-up is The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. Creepy, spooky, girl moves to an old family home that she hasn't been to since she was a little girl with her pet cat who is fantastic and spooky shit starts happening. The second half of that book is fucking creepy. Highly recommend. Uh, a new one that we haven't talked about 4.25 stars is Lakes Edge by Lindo Clipstone. This is the Owlcrate version. It is fantastically gorgeous. I love it so much. These end papers though. This book follows uh, Violetta, who goes Violetta, and her brother Arian. And we start off the book with Arian who has some weird fucking creepy magic that he has no control over. And they were adopted as small children. They came from a village that there was like a plague that took out. And so basically someone just like burnt the whole village, village to the ground and they were able to escape. And they were found on the side of the road and taken in by this nice lady who took them in. Um, the other main character, we'll call him the monster because that's all we know him by at the beginning. He's the lake's edge monster. Yeah. So this book deals a lot with like dark magic, making deals with devils, finding magic, both good and light magic, light and dark magic. Um, and like the things that you're willing to sacrifice to save the people that you care about. Uh, definitely, I, I think I liked this better than most people did. I really enjoyed it. It is, okay, let's put it this way. This is a gothic horror story, which means 95% of it is a romance and the other 5% is a gothic horror story. That's how gothic horror stories work, you know? Anytime they put the word gothic in it, it means there's gonna be a romance and it's gonna play heavy. And y'all, I was here for it. I also thought this was a standalone and it is definitely not by the way that it ends. I really enjoy this. I really like the characters. I think they were very well done. I like our soft boy monster. Like, of course I love the creepy soft boy. Who doesn't, right? And I just, I like the found family aspect. I like this magic verse that we're in and just the, I like the bad guy. Like, I like the demon that we're making deals with. He's interesting and I want to know more about him, which says a lot about me, if I'm being honest. Uh, but I did really like this and I do highly recommend it. And then what I believe is my last 4.25 out of 5 stars was The Ivies by 
Alexa Dunn. I just forgot Alexa's name. Like I don't watch her YouTube videos and see her face all the time. It's fine. Uh, anyway, I talked about this in my mid-month wrap up. Alexa is a fellow author tuber and I love this book. It is like um, a boarding school, prep school, fighting over college, people backstabbing kind of story and I really enjoyed it. So highly recommend this as well. Also I said this in my mid-month wrap up but uh, I'm not in love with this cover. So this would be more like a 4.5 or a 4.75 but because I count covers into my ratings it kind of dragged down a little bit in all fairness. This book was fantastic. Okay just a couple more to talk about. Uh, since we're talking about <clears throat> people that I should know their names let's go to our next 4.5. Our next 4.5 is Other Boys by Damien Alexander. Uh, Damien is the partner of one of my friends, Kevin the writer, also an author tuber, and he wrote this fantastic middle grade comic book. It is um, a memoir, a life story. It pulls heavily from Damien's childhood, um, from things that he experienced, such as growing up with his grandparents versus parents, um, his brother, his family, um, being more into girly things than what things people deemed were appropriate for boys his age, um, and deals a lot with that. Um, there is definitely some homophobia in here. There is a death of a parent. There's a good bit of uh, things in here that you may want to check out some trigger warnings before you hop in, but I really enjoyed this. I think the artwork is so well done. Um, I think Damien was spot on. I love his art anyway, but um, I just, I love, I am not a comic reader, so I appreciate as a non-comic reader when I can understand the order that the panels go in. I know that's such like an easy, I know that's like a like an easy thing to, to say that like I enjoy the panel work but sometimes when I read like the witch books um, because they're translated from like French into English the panels don't always line up in a way that makes sense um, so I appreciate that I was able to understand these panels and not be confused um, but I think this is a really heartfelt touching story about <sighs> I think I think anybody could read this and see themselves in middle school in this. Um, I am a straight cis white woman and I could see myself in this as far as like just a lot of the things that we were handed in middle school. Um, middle school is a hard place for everybody but especially those who don't have anybody to stick up for them and this book kind of talks about how once you realize that there's nothing wrong with you, it can also give you the empowerment to help others realize that as well. Um, I really liked where this thing ended up at. I cried. It was a fantastic time. I cannot recommend this enough to everybody. Um, if you like mid-grade or if you like heartfelt stories, if you like memoirs or reading things about people's past, if you want to connect with other people, um, if you, you know, if you haven't if you have kids that are in this age bracket and maybe it's been so long since you've been a middle schooler you don't remember what it's like even though this is a middle schooler from the past I think a lot of the themes and topics will still trans to today so highly 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 recommend this it was fantastic. My other 4.5 this month was Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. <laughs> Whoo y'all this book okay so <laughs> Sorry if the angle changed, I just had to let the puppies out of the room. The wee, the wee babby puppies that are nine weeks old, uh, Wednesday, and Lucifer. And, uh... They're on one tonight. Uh, anyway, so Rules for Vanishing, K. Alice Marshall. Um, I listened to this on my trip to Michigan, and... Maybe not the best choice I ever made because extra spooky. But also, it was about a seven and a half hour car ride. So I don't know if that kind of messed with the pacing of the book a little bit because it did feel a little long to me. But normally, that wouldn't feel long in an audiobook. I think it was just because I was in the car for so long. Um, so that might have deterred a little bit. But anyway, this book follows 
our main character whose sister went missing the year previously and in their town there's always been this rumor about a road that only appears on a certain night of the year and her core friend group has kind of all fallen apart but they all um, kind of agree to meet at where this road will appear on the night that it's supposed to appear to go on the road to get her sister back and it's creepy y'all there's some shit that happens there is things are not what they seem one of those um the further into the story you get the more you're learning about the things that are actually going on and when you get to the end you learn even more things about what's actually going on and I still have questions about some things but that book was fantastic but also super fucking trippy so again if you like YA horror stories cannot recommend a book enough like so good so damn good and then the last book on the list is a 4.75 and that is A Curse and Ash by Julie Zantopoulos who is a friend of mine and a fellow author tuber and I will link her channel in the description box down below if you would like to check her out. Um, I'm sure if you're here you're already there but anyway um, I talked about this in my mid-month wrap-up so I'm not gonna talk about it again nor did I talk about it in the ARC review book. I, I might have talked about it in the mid-month wrap-up. I also might have talked about it in the ARC review wrap up because it technically was an arc so I make no promises if it's in the arc review wrap up you'll see the picture in the thumbnail because I'm trying to put the covers of the arcs that I read in those videos in the thumbnails to be helpful not a highly watched video but I like doing them because I really enjoy reading arcs so honey way I read this it was great 4.75 out of 5 stars uh, my favorite book I read this month is that bias by my love of Julie maybe a little but also still a very solid book so take that as you will so these are some of the books I read this month uh, obviously not all of them but some of them if you've read any of these books and you'd like to discuss them further please find me in the comments section down below because I would love to talk to them talk to them about you talk to you about them yeah there we go okay that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! Whoa, my heart is so hot.